So hey everyone, I finally decided to make another Canada Goose video. Since I got such a positive response with my last one of my last videos, the Chillock Bomber review, um, I finally decided to do my Trillium review, which is one of the women's coats. Now I've been getting a lot of questions as far as uh, counterfeiting and fit and sizes, so I think I'm also going to do another two videos today. Um, in t like having to do with any uh, purchase of real Canada gooses, buying online, where to buy, how to know a goose is real, and then I've thought about also doing a video on um, the fur itself and the down in the coat since it's more of a controversial topic and since I haven't really spoken about it in the Chillock video and I probably won't, I'll touch on it in this video but I won't go into the extent and the details like I usually do with my customers so I've worked in a retail store for the last three years um, and I've worked on the Canada Goose Coats for those three years and solely for only almost a year um, so I've learned a lot I basically can answer any of your questions whether it has to do with the coats themselves the company where to buy again any tips and tricks how to clean uh, maintenance uh, the technical aspects of the coat waterproofing whether or not it's waterproof or not um, which I think I will again as well touch on in this video um, but basically I've been asked every question under the Sun when it comes to these lovely coats it is one of my favorite Favorite brand probably is my favorite brand and second runner-up is Arcteryx um, but Canada Goose is definitely my favorite brand that's why I can go on for hours and hours and hours talking about these coats and my experiences with these coats I've had a lot of people come in I've seen a lot of trash coats I've seen coats that have had manufacturing problems with them I've seen people destroy their coats so if you have any questions as far as warranty or how to fix a coat or where to go to fix a coat um, I can answer that question or at least I can try um, unfortunately I haven't worked in the men's department so I don't know the men's styles as well but if you guys any of the men out there have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and that's for everybody else comments down below you can either tweet at me if you guys want to take a picture of your Canada Goose having questions about maybe the tags having to do with counterfeiting or any damage that's been done to the coats again you can Instagram that to me which I will leave all of that in the question in the down below and um, so let's get started uh, this is the women's trillium it is obviously not in black I didn't buy either one of my gooses in black mostly because this company does fabulous colors probably out of all the companies that I've seen except for Arcteryx I think that's why Arcteryx is my second favorite uh, whether it goes to ski companies like Spider and Nascent or luxury brands like Montclair and Parajumpers, Canada de Goose or North Face, I should throw them out, out there as well. When it comes to winter coats, Canada Goose does fabulous colors from their bombers to their trilliums to their Kensingtons. They come in a, an array of colors from yellow, orange, of like four or five shades of blue um, there's variations of red so you can get um, any color basically under the Sun now my tip for purchasing one of these coats and purchasing it in a color usually I recommend that if you're going to buy a coat in a color you really 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 have to love that color because this is going to be a coat that can last you up to upwards to 10 years if you take care of it properly which I will go over some of the care wise in this video as well um, but basically if you don't if you, there's any hesitation with the color, like if you might like the graphite, which is a nice deep gray, if you might like the navy, if you're not settled on a color, just stick with black because if you're going into your closet every single day hesitating to put your coat on, then you're not going to wear it as often as you would in something like, let's say, black. So I did get mine in a forest green color, which is what the color the color code technically was. Um, it is a color that is discontinued now as of last year. They tend to usually do that, I have found over the last three years. 
instead of coming out with new styles, they have come out with new colors, which I appreciate a lot more because it definitely gives variety. I think their classic winter line is basically perfect as far as winter coats go for women and the styles, so I really don't think they need to necessarily perfect too much more in new styles. Um, so the color gives variety. So for a screen color, this coat is a level 4 coat. As well, when it comes to the ratings, Canada Goose is the only brand that I know of that actually rates their coats as far as in temperature. So this coat being a level 4, they go from level 5 to a level 1. Level 4 is negative 15 to negative 25, but you have to keep this in mind that it is only suggested rating. I have worn this coat out in negative 40 degrees negative 40 degree weather, consistent negative 40 degree weather, because that was the weather that we had here in Toronto last year, unfortunately, and I was just fine. So I will go on about that as well in this video as far as layering, what you should wear under your coats, what women tend to not wear under their coats, and why we get complaints from style to style that they're not technically warm enough. You really have to consider what you wear every single day, how you're long out, how long you are outside every single day. If you're outside for more than 20 or 30 minutes and it is negative 25 or negative 30 or negative 40, something like the Kensington is most likely not going to be warm enough for you, especially if you tend again to get cold easily, which I've mentioned in my videos past. I get cold super super easy. I'm wearing two pairs of socks uh, mid September or mid November on um, until finally it gets warm. Um, so I need the extra warmth so this is definitely the coat for me it is something to consider then again if you are in your coat if you're bouncing in between the parking lots to uh, your office or to a building if you are just picking up your kids this might be a coat that's just too much for you um, it's definitely a parka styled coat they are all technically called parkas but more resemble more there are some that resemble more of a parka style which are in my eyes a little bit bulkier a little bit heavier where some of them are definitely more tailored more fitted more of a fashion coat though they are still built to be well designed winter coats um but it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Do you wear a lot of layers? Do you not wear a lot of layers? Do you wear a suit? Are you going to be able to wear your suit and fit your suit under the size that you are putting on? Especially, this is the great debate that I have with women in, especially something like the Kensington, which is meant to be more of a fitted, kind of more of a fashion jacket because of all the buttons, the way it's designed, it's basically sewn to be fitted, where this guy is sewn to be a little bit more of a relaxed fit. There are the reasons behind this versus the reasons behind the Kensington. Usually these two are the ones that are compared the most in my eyes and I find with my customers. Um, and over the last year, year and a half, I have found that the Trillium has definitely become more of the popular style. Mostly because people don't want to be cold and that's this is just effortless. You throw it on and you don't necessarily have to throw on a ton of layers with this guy. Whereas something with the Kensington, you might have to put a layer or two extra on because you're not going to be getting enough of the warmth coming from that coat. I know it's crazy to say that say that when it comes to Canada Goose because basically their motto is ask anyone that know anyone that knows or basically ask anybody that has one of these coats and they'll tell you. I've had these two coats. This one I've had for two years. My Chillac I've now had for three years and I'm telling you these are the warmest things I've ever put on my body. I could not survive winter without these coats and I will probably most likely never purchase any other coat unless fashion wise, warmth wise, I'm just going to stick to Canada Goose just because of how well made they are and just how amazing these coats I are so level four again negative 25 slash kind of up I find but in their standards it's negative 15 to negative 25 um, like you can see it is definitely more of a, a parka it is built bigger up top women for all the lady out all the ladies out there that have wider shoulders a bigger chest um, this may be a coat for you just because of the way it's designed um, the reason it's designed to be bigger up top is because they want, they expect you, especially at these weathers that this coat is made for, they expect you to layer. So you need to have to be able to move comfortably. Usually my test for customers is if you can do this and not feel any uncomfortable pulling through the shoulders, through the back, through the chest, 
It is also, I find, the most polite way to tell customers that something doesn't necessarily fit. I know that sounds awful, but it's basically, I have a lot of women that tend to squeeze into the smallest size that they can just because they really want that figure flattering shape when it comes to a winter coat. And half of my brain gets it, but a lot of, but the other half just really doesn't. It is a winter coat. You're buying it for the warmth. You want to be warm. The statement that it makes just this patch alone is your fashion statement. The fur, I feel, is definitely a big statement. The colors definitely can be a statement. And from style to style in general, it's a statement. So really consider size, but this is usually the first dead giveaway. I find that the arms, when they're looking a lot bulkier, when they're starting to really low down low on the hands that is also a giveaway when you're starting to go into a size that might be too big um, but again also consider what layers you're going to be wearing because they may fill out the coat so something to keep in mind um, but this coat is built bigger up top I'm going to step away so you can see the bottom half of it uh, basically, this coat is more fitted in through the hips. Um, it is slimmer fitting in through the hips, which is nice because that's what kind of gives it a little bit more shape. A lot of women are surprised when they actually put the Trillium on because of how much shape it actually can have or may look like it has. It has a band in the back, which gives it a nice shape in through the back. It has pulls on the inside of this jacket where you can actually adjust the waist, which I have adjusted, which pulls you, they're super easy to deal with. They're super durable, I find. I think in the three years that I've worked at the store that I work at, maybe two uh, that I know of coats came back because the pulls ripped on the inside, but they're really fairly durable, and that could be something that is either warranty covered, uh, manufacturing-wise covered, or you may be charged I will talk about warranty some other time, but that is something that you could be covered for, most likely be covered for. Um, but the nice thing is, is that it does give you a nice shape in through the front. It creates an illusion of a waist, and um, again, it, it hugs nicely down through the hips, which is also for somebody who's a little bit more hippie, you might find that it is a little bit more snug, so consider sizes or consider other styles. Um, they make more styles and more options for any other woman with any other shape. Now when it comes to the zipper itself, all the Canada Goose coats, as far as I know, all have double zippers. So what that means is you can unzip the coat from the bottom up. Uh, not just this zipper, but there is another zipper, which is this guy down here. I'm wearing all black, which probably isn't helping, but is it's this zipper here. So you can unzip it. So sitting comfortably down in the bus, on the subway, in your car, getting in and out of the car, being able to squat to pick your kids up, you can always undo that zipper to help you just maneuver down on the other half of your body. Um, the other, probably my two favorite features of this coat in general are the snap buttons and the sleeve slash po chest pockets and let me show you. So as far as the buttons go, a lot of the buttons, there's kind of two or three variations of of closing me mechanisms for uh, their coats. There's Velcro, there's just snap buttons, there's big round buttons, and there's these little tiny hooped uh, buttons which are on, um, or little hoops that you wrap around buttons, which is on the Kensington. Personally, this is definitely my favorite. I absolutely hate those little tiny hoop things. Just even opening the coat up for customers is the biggest pain in the butt. Um, the rounder buttons makes a little more sense, and Velcro I just can't stand in the middle of winter, so I don't necessarily agree with that closing option of that those particular coats, which is the Victoria. I don't agree, but that is my opinion. Um, the snap buttons, I think, is basically the brightest and best idea. In the morning times, especially for all of you who are up really early in the morning, by the time you get dressed, by the time you have breakfast, and by the time you're heading out the door, you want to throw your coat on, snap it closed, and get out. Um, I don't want to, especially with all those layers on, I don't want to be fiddling with little loops or buttons or anything. I snap the damn things closed, I can even keep my mitts on, and I'm out the door, and I don't have to worry about anything. That is probably one of my favorite features. Now, my second favorite feature of this coat is basically the sleeves slash chest pockets of this coat. This is ingenious, I find, uh, and all those coat all the other coat companies 
pay attention. Um, don't be alarmed. With the Trillium, the sleeves do come down lower, obviously, on the hand. And usually you can, they're easy, they're super, super easy to roll up. So usually if I'm doing anything, I just roll them up and they're good to go. So as you can see, this one's rolled up. This one's rolled up. But I like to forget things on a regular basis. And forgetting things is just in my nature. So if I forget my mitts, which are extremely important for my little phalanges, um, I just do this. Yeah, roll down the sleeve leaves like so and you can do this and you're good to go the things the absolute best thing that I love about the pockets is the fact that they're fleece lined and then they're just so toasty I mean this is the best kind of coverage system that these coats have this is why I love this brand so much because they really consider the small things when it comes to their coats you know, I've I've tried on dozens and dozens of coats from uh, like from Montclair to North Face to Macage to Nobis, which is a whole disaster in and of itself. Uh, I've tried on ski coats. I've tried on a ton of different coats. I've tried on technical coats. I've tried on fashion coats. This is probably one of the best features I've ever seen in my entire life. It is so simple and yet it is absolutely freaking amazing. Just because it keeps you so warm. Like right now, I am cooking in this coat. Um, Along with the rest of the features, this hood I find on most of the level 4 jackets are the hoods tend to be removable, which this guy is. Uh, somebody mentioned that I hadn't gone over the details it greatly with the Chilliwack, so I will go over this one. Most of the hoods for the most part are designed similarly, kind of, but I'll just go over the features and then if you guys have any questions, again, leave them down below. Um, this hood is removable, so the Velcro, the tab pieces, you just pull out over here. <laughs> There you go. And then the zipper is right here and then it zips off and it's super easy to remove. So if you're looking to take your hood off, it's actually, it's just a zipper. You zip it off and then the, you've got the rest of the coat to head out the door with. Um, the hoods are a down fill hood. So they are, you get a lot of coverage. You don't necessarily need to wear a hat, uh, which is why I love this hood as well. It's down filled. It's super soft. It's super comfortable. You get a ton of coverage. Um, now with, along with the level fours, I've noticed that they did put it in to the Victoria coat. The fur actually does have a wire so you can shape it around your face if you really want to and it stays in place but the whole idea with the real fur which is what this is is coyote is that it doesn't freeze and it also keeps your face extremely warm so that is why that is there and that is why it is real and that is why they use coyote furs because it doesn't freeze that's originally what these coats were made for the expedition was one of the first original coats it was for people who were made to go out on mountains and god forbid avalanche or if somebody needed to get to another person Person. They're not ripping through plastic or trying to get through frozen plastic, but they could simply take off the hood and save somebody's life. That is why, that is one of the huge reasons why they use real fur. I promise that to, I will leave the rest of that to the fur end down video. But this is real fur. The fur also is removable. Minus the Chilliwack and the Expedition, all the furs off all the coats, including, I'm pretty sure the men's, all the fur comes off. I know for a fact that the kids as well, all the fur comes off, minus the Chilliwack and the Expedition. So if that's some sort of concern to you, we have to sell it to you with the fur. Once you get home, you can zip the fur off and throw it in the back of your closet and you don't have to think about it. It's a warranty thing. If warranty wise, if you'd ever have to bring the coat back, at least for where I work for, you have to bring the fur back so we could send it off with the coat. But what you do once you get home is totally up to you. It's your $700 coat. You do whatever you want. Um, but the fur is removable. Again, it's just another zipper right here that you just zip right off um, this hood is ingenious as far as the way it's designed because not only when you put it on and form the, the fur to your face there are little toggles that are hidden um, behind the velcro tabs that you can adjust to pull it in even more so you are basically buried like no other in this coat which is absolutely amazing in negative 40 degree weather I have not had a single com I there's no complaints coming out of me in this coat um, the other, the last and final adjustment
adjustment to this hood. Um, a lot of people ask me about this in the Chilliwack video. It's the same in this, um, it's in the same, it's the same thing with this hood. I'm just going to turn around and show you. There's just a little pull that you can adjust. So it is, the hood's not coming down to here, but it's sitting where it should be on the top of your head, which is this little pull here. I actually have it already pulled up because that's why the hood is sitting here and not down here. Um, you just pull that little piece and it'll pull back uh, a little bit higher so you're getting the coverage that you need. This hood is probably again one of the best hoods I've seen on any kind of a coat. It's big which fits my head and my hair uh, which I love especially in the winter time I will still do my hair so not much of it's going to get messed up even though it's getting messed up right now. It's all good. Now, other features of this coat is not only just the long sleeves, um, uh, there are pockets like no other on this coat. Sometimes I like to head out the door without having to worry about, uh, you know, bringing a purse. Um, this coat, not only are the chest pockets nice and deep where you could throw your phone and your keys, but there are two larger pockets down below, which you can basically... I have junk in and coins in. Uh, you can stuff all the stuff into the bottom half of the coat and you're basically good to go out the door. The inside of the coat also has a plus because it, there's a pocket, there's a little chest pocket, which apparently I have money in as well. Woohoo, I have a dollar. Who knew? Um, there are, there's a little inside pocket as well so you can throw your debit cards, your credit cards, your cash, maybe your phone if you're not feeling comfortable leaving in the chest pocket. You can throw it into the side pocket on the inside and you're out the door. Um, as far as the uh, waterproofing of this coat, the only waterproof coats that Canada Goose make are their now new shell coats which are like the Arcteryx videos that I kind of went over. I haven't gotten my hands on the shells in Canada Goose Mostly because I have my Arcteryx shells and the Canada Goose shells are really pricey unless they would like to give me one to do a review on one. As far as from what I've been told, the research that I've done, it is basically their waterproofing is not Gore-Tex but it's the step down um, and they are extremely waterproof. They're, there's an interesting design to them. I like them. I haven't tested them out. But again, the shell and the Branta collection are the only two coat, the only two, well, some of the coats in the Branta collection are waterproof, along with the shells. They're the only coats that they make that are waterproof. The rest of the collection in the classic line, the kids stuff, the adult stuff, the men's and the women's, um, the coats aren't actually technically legally waterproof. To waterproof a coat, which I've explained this in past videos, especially doing with my Arcteryx coats, um, they have to be seam sealed uh, and taped and all of that jazz. So I'm not going to go over too much of the technical details and uh, fine print. You can leave, you can find all of that in my Arcteryx videos. Um, but as far as this coat goes, so it does have a DWR coating on it, which is a waterproofing that you, most winter coats technically have. Um, North Face, I think, is the only other brand that I know, minus Parajumper, that make waterproof winter coats. Does that really, do you really necessarily need a waterproof winter coat? I say no, especially if you li live in the city. Um... Mostly because in Toronto we get psychotic weather all year round. One minute it's super sunny and 35 degrees. The next minute it is back to 18 and it's freezing and it's gloomy and it's raining. Um, when it comes to the winter time, the weather is kind of fluctuating that way as well. Even though last year it was just flat out cold all winter, which shocked a lot of people and that's why we sold out of these coats like crazy. Um, you basically, my rule of thumb is if it's raining outside or if it's warm enough to be raining, it's way too hot for you to be wearing something like this or your other Canada Goose coats. Save the coats and just wear an old winter coat or wear a shell and wear some layers. It Trust me, as far as the DWR coating on this coat, it is what makes this coat waterproof. I'm just going to do this just because... Technically, again, it's not waterproof, but waterproof. It is waterproofing. It basically makes this coat water res uh, like re water resistant and repellent to wet snow and wet rain or w wet rain. 
rain, wet snow, and snow. It's not to say that you can't go out in the snow or in the rain or wet snow or go play with your kids in the snow. It's not necessarily that you can't do that, but if it's raining outside, don't be out there for more than an hour. That is my rule of thumb for the most part. Seriously, guys, I try to explain this as, as well as I can. Basically, if you get the coat soaking wet constantly, it's going to wear it down that much faster. Usually, I say these coats have a lifetime span of 3 years to 10 years. You really, if you take care of it, it'll last you 10 years. If you don't take care of it, it'll only last you 2 or 3 years. Um, I've seen a lot of coats that have definitely been worn through and have lasted about 3 or 4 years. Again, it has to do with weather, it has to do with how well you take care of it. If you're wearing it every single day, in every kind of weather, it's going to wear down a lot faster. Now, getting it soaking wet, it's just going to wear down the coating, and you can't put that coating back. You can't spray these coats. Uh, it basically throws your warranty out the window. Um, you can't really do anything to put the coating back. So. So I unfortunately have done that to my poor Chilliwack. I have worn it in the pouring rain for three hours, which I really don't recommend doing. There's no serious damage to the coat. Overnight it basically dried, so these coats do dry. You don't have to worry about that. It really has to do with the coating again. And because of the color of these coats, and because they are, ten, like I like to say, they're ten, technically they're really over dyed, the dye does it will fade, it will wear, um, especially if you're going to get soaking wet, again, um, it will wear it down as well. So that's why I've taken a lot better care of my Trillium, and as you can see, my makeup is still on here, so baby wipes are a thing. You can clean these coats with baby wipes. Um, you can spot clean with mild soap and water, that's not a problem. Um, dry clean only as well. The adult coats, the men's and women's coats are still dry clean only. Um, that's a whole little bit of a lecture as well and I'll leave that to the end. Um, the kids are now in the new collection as of last year are machine washable as long as you take the fur off and you use a technical wash like Nick Wax, um, Sport Tech, I think, or Sport, wa there's Sport Washes, any kind of sporting goods store you walk into and ask for a bottle of wash to clean a down jacket, they should know exactly what you're talking about. I'll leave some links down below to some companies that produce the right type of washes to clean down coats and synthetic coats, whether it's your Spider, Arcteryx, or your North Face, or your Para Jumper, because Para Jumpers are it's a machine washable coat as long as you again take all the fur off um, and then with the baby kid stuff or the kid stuff take the fur off you throw it in the wash you wash it and you throw it into the dryer super 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 low 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 heat and throw some tennis balls in there what the tennis balls are going to do they're actually going to refluff the down they're going to help dry it a lot faster you may have to do a cycle or two for it to actually dry um, so just keep that in the back of your mind basically any down coat that you can wash use a technical wash that is meant to clean down even though they say use a mild detergent on the inside mild detergents something like tide or whatever other detergents are out there they were not built to clean technical coats with dwr coating or down um, basically they'll wash and rub down the coating they were going to get rid of it basically all together um, it'll clump the down it's not going to clean it down the again the down properly it's going to basically destroy your coat um, so please and thank you just you do a little research find a local store that sells uh, tech wash and go buy some they're not that expensive they're about I think the cheapest bottle is about $13 or $14, so you're already spending $800, $13 isn't going to kill you. Um, uh, so again, women's, men's, not machine washable, dry clean only. I do have a recommended dry cleaner, it's the only recommended dry cleaner we use, Hollanderizing. They're based out of Toronto, unfortunately, and um, they do go out... Do, they do do free pickup and delivery within the GTA. They are the only company we trust 
and as far as we, it's the place that I work and I trust. Um, they were the only ones that managed to clean and fix some coats as far as cleaning wise, anything to do in the cleaning bubble. Some coats in-house that got destroyed by some lovely protesters and it's because of the um, it's the process that they use and the te like type of washes that they use. It basically has the coats coming looking like brand spanking new. So I will leave their website as well in the down below. Basically, my rule of thumb with dry cleaners, if you walk in and ask, uh, do you know how to clean a Canada Goose, and there's a single second of hesitation, walk out. W walk out. I've seen coats that have been destroyed by dry cleaners. It is heartbreaking, like a part of my soul dies. So just do a little research again and go somewhere to, go to somebody that knows what the heck they're doing when it comes to cleaning these lovely coats. Um, I really got off topic there. But as far as cleaning the coats, again, the coating, waterproofing, that is the waterproofing on these coats. So if you can avoid the pouring rain, um, that is why I got one of my Arcteryx coats, the one with the Korloff fill. That is why I purchased that coat for the wet days in winter time. Just think, just wear something else. Just save yourself the headache and the stress. Just wear something else that day. Seriously, guys, don't do it. Please, 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 please don't do it. Um, uh, besides all that, when it comes to dry cleaners, again, that's, that's my suggestion. Be super careful where you're buying your Canada Goose Coats, guys. Please be very, very careful where you're purchasing them. Make sure it's an authorized dealer. Um, I answered a question in the Chilliwack video about, uh, Rundle, which is the children's Chilliwack version, um, in the last, that's what they've renamed it in the last year and a half. Um, and... In the, on the Canada Goose website, you can go to a URL kind of thing where you can punch in a website and it, they will tell you whether it's authorized or not. Um, just do a little research. My counterfeiting, counterfeiting video will be coming up after this one. So if you guys want to stay tuned and uh, hear what I have to say when it comes to real and fake Canada Goose coats, I will go over that as well. Um, but anything else when it comes to the women's styles, that is all I have about the Trillium. It is considered to be a three-quarter length jacket as well. I didn't throw that in there, so I'm throwing it out there now. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, about anything that comes to Canada Goose, please feel free to ask me. I will do, the, I will do it to the best of my abilities to answer you and your questions. Um, I hope I've been thorough with the chill uh, with the Trillium where I wasn't in the Chilliwack and. And again, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to ask. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys soon.